Coming up on NBC 26 today, the Packers have their first preseason game versus the Philadelphia Eagles. What you need to know if you're headed to the game. Plus, the 9-11 monument in Green Bay, one step closer to coming down. And the steps the Trump administration is taking after North Korea's threats targeting a U.S. territory. And right now, we're watching scattered showers and thunderstorms working through parts of the area, and it's actually most of us being affected by that. This is a low pressure right here. You can see the center of it, the swirl around it, and let's get a little bit closer. Now, I'm not going to go individually on each cell because they're all over the place right now. Kind of a little bit of a break towards Shawano, but you're going to see more activity rolling on in. Uh, break in Watoma, a little bit more to your west. Fond du Lac, the, the key is for today, scattered. There will be breaks with this, but still a quick downpour, and then it moves on out, quick downpour. Uh, that'll just kind of be on and off as we head throughout the day. Here's a look at Skycast, maybe a lull this morning before it starts to pick back up with these scattered showers and thunderstorms, even into parts of the evening, by the way, for the Packers game. Just be aware of that. Current temperatures, a little bit warmer than yesterday, 66, Appleton 67, Oshkosh. So a mild start. Kind of a mild day, 78 degrees with these scattered thunderstorms. Uh, Regina, I'm going to let you know when they move on out and how the weekend is looking coming up. Thanks, Fish. NBC 26 is your official Packers station. Good morning. I'm Regina on broadcast and morning off. The Packers will take on the Philadelphia Eagles tonight in their first preseason game. NBC 26's Emily Beyer begins our team coverage live from Lambeau with what you need to know before you head to the game. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Regina. Hello, everyone. Rain or shine, Packers fans are going to make their way here to Lambeau to cheer on the pack in their first preseason game. Remember, umbrellas are not allowed in, so you will want to bring a poncho to escape the rain tonight. No bags or purses are allowed inside Lambeau Field unless they're clear and no larger than 12 by 6 by 12 inches. Stadium cushions are also not allowed. However, stadium seats and pads that don't have pockets or zippers and are 18 inches wide or smaller are allowed, and everyone will need to go through walk-through metal detectors. Expect to see some heavy traffic along I-41, Highway 172, and I-43. We're all excited to see the pack back, but make sure you give yourself extra time to get to Lambeau. The DOT will also open as many lanes as possible, but some work zones will still have traffic control devices, orange barrels, and narrow lanes. Today, the Johnsonville Tailgate Village will make its debut. You don't have to have tickets to the game to have fun in the village. They'll have a live band tonight as well as some food, drinks, and everything you need to have a blast while tailgating. Now, the parking lots open at 3 o'clock today. The stadium uh, gates open at 5 o'clock. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock tonight. Go Pack! Reporting live from Lambeau, Emily Byer, NBC26. Thanks, Emily. As the Packers make their final preparations to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, the front office is preparing to welcome fans to cheer them on. NBC26's Max Grossfield continues our team coverage up tonight. For season kickoff. Fans can't wait to get their first chance to step inside Lambeau's hallowed halls for a game this season. Walking through the doors on game day here, um, there's no other place. I love all the things they have here. There's so much stuff to do. New this year, the Johnsonville Tailgate Village is a place for fans to take a break from the elements. Packers staff members are ready to show it off. And just with training camp, having family night last week, I mean, there's just a lot of excitement in the air. I think everybody is ready for football season to start. So um, it's fun. It, it's All your planning comes together. Um, and it's a great feeling. While much of the action will take place on the field, many of the benefits will be felt here at the Diocese of Green Bay. The first preseason game is the Bishop's Charities game that raises more than $60,000 for the cause. It's extremely heartwarming. And again, the, the commitment that the Packers have made um, is just you know, a, a tremendous, tremendous um, complement to, to what we're trying to do. Since the tradition began in 1961, the game has raised nearly $4 million for the Catholic Charities. Keeping you connected for NBC 26, I'm Max Grossfeld. And if you're looking to snag some tickets for today's game, you can do that and help local youth. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Green Bay is selling preseason tickets at half price with all proceeds benefiting the club. Last year, the Packers ticket program helped the club raise $88,000 and already this year, they have close to 1,000 tickets donated. It really shows the support that we have from the community and even people outside of Green Bay. Um, we have season ticket holders all over the state of Wisconsin and some people even out of state. And it's really exciting to see that they know they have this opportunity to donate to us. 
Tickets can be purchased by calling, emailing, or by stopping by the Boys and Girls Club. There are also tickets available for the preseason game against the Los Angeles Rams on August 31st. NBC 26 is the place to be for all of your Packers coverage. Be sure to tune in to the pregame show starting at 6 tonight. Right after that at 6.30 is a Packers pregame show. Again, kickoff is at 7, then right after the game. Stay tuned for our post-game show. And there will be a chance of a shower or thunderstorm during the game tonight. But the key is going to be these are scattered. It's not going to be an all day or all night event. We're seeing that right now through most of northeast Wisconsin, moving through parts of Fond du Lac, out of Gamey, Wapaka. You get the story. When you're heading out the door, watch for these hit and miss showers. Here's a look at Skycast going throughout the day. Maybe this lull in the late morning here, but more scattered showers and thunderstorms firing up going into the evening as well. So the forecast for the rest of your day, just scattered showers and thunderstorms going up to 78 degrees. Kind of a mild day, even by the evening, still mild. Regina, I'm going to let you know when this activity moves on out of here and how the weekend is looking coming up. Thanks, Fish. Now to new information. Brown County deputies arrest 35 people during a four-day sex trafficking sting. This was part of a nationwide bust with more than 1,000 Johns taken into custody. Ten other Johns were arrested in Wisconsin by the Department of Justice. In total, more than 1,000 sex buyers were arrested. The Sheriff's Office will be holding a news conference today discussing more details about the sting. An Oshkosh man accused of abusing his infant daughter has reached a plea agreement. 21-year-old Richard Root pleaded no contest and the court found him guilty. According to the criminal complaint in March, Root took his then two-month-old daughter to Aurora Hospital. Police say she had at least 20 broken bones. In court, Root took a plea deal for neglecting a child and will be sentenced on October 20th. Investigators say cigarette butts caused an apartment fire that forced 14 people out of their homes and sent one person to the hospital. The Ripon Fire Department says someone on a second floor balcony at the Valley Crest Apartments put cigarette butts in a plastic container. They say that sparked a fire that went up the wall and into the roof. The Red Cross is helping the tenants. The 9-11 Memorial in downtown Green Bay one step closer to coming down. Last night, the city's park committee approved tearing down the memorial. It has wrong information and several of the victims' names have worn off the wall. Now they're saying they can't wait for it to come down. NBC 26's Shane Gustafson has more. Holes, cracks and faded names fill the 9-11 Memorial in downtown Green Bay. It's embarrassing. I mean, and then, and then you add on top of it the errors that were engraved in it. I mean, it, it was embarrassing. Alderman Randy Scannell has led the push to tear down the monument. It arrived over a decade ago as a gift from a now disbanded organization and was rejected by the city of Madison. Wednesday night, members of the park committee approved a recommendation to council calling for its removal. There's maybe some talk of, you know, we're going to do fundraising for the uh, uh, new memorial and maybe uh, use bits and pieces of that as part of the fundraiser, if that's possible. But an original beam from the Twin Towers currently sitting on the monument will stay. Scandal says it will play a big role in the city's proposed new public safety building. The police department first, and there's talk of uh, every six months switching it from the police uh, administrative building to the fire administrative building. Scandal says the overall hope is remembering the victims. City Council does have to approve the project before it can begin. That should happen next Tuesday. Scandal says he expects the vote to pass. The beam would be moved during a service on September 11th this year. More on the crisis with North Korea now. The country says it will have a plan to launch for missiles at Guam by the middle of this month. They threatened the strike after President Trump promised fire and fury if North Korea keeps threatening the U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis says North Korea needs to stop making threats that could lead to the end of its regime and the destruction of its own people. One former lawmaker says there are three steps the U.S. should take. What we do need to do is... Uh, first, it rapidly accelerate our research of ballistic missile defenses. Some people say it's too late. Every day we delay makes it even later. Number two, engage China constructively. And number three, continue to build out our alliances. North Korea says its missiles can reach the mainland of the U.S. and some U.S. intelligence officials say the North also developed a mini-nuke that can fit on a missile.
FBI agents raided former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort's home in Virginia last month. Agents took financial and tax records and other documents. Manafort says he's cooperating with the investigation. He stepped down as Trump's campaign chair last August as questions about Russia's involvement in the election intensified. Manafort was also at the Trump Tower meeting with Trump Jr. where they met with a Russian lawyer. Experts say investigators could use the evidence seized as leverage to strike a deal with him. And for continuing coverage on the Russian investigation into alleged collusion, visit our website. That's NBC26.com. Still ahead, the legend himself returns to Northeast Wisconsin to accept yet another award. Highlights from Brett Favre's Lee Rebel ceremony. And helping kids in need get the school stuff to succeed. The local charity that's helping students be cool for school. Watching this low pressure working its way through today, giving us scattered showers and thunderstorms already. But look at high pressure out to the west. I'm going to let you know what that means for your weekend. Coming up in your full Storm Shield forecast. Stay with us. You're connected to NBC 26 Today with Brooke Hayes, meteorologist Michael Fish, remote weather with meteorologist Matt Hoffman, and Emily Byer. NBC 26 Today, keeping you connected. Hundreds of students already going back to school shopping. The Service League of Green Bay held their 25th annual Back to School Store Wednesday. 1,500 children from the area who qualified were able to pick out a brand new outfit and a new pair of shoes. The children also were able to choose a backpack, then fill it with school supplies they need. It does help um, them see positive influences in the community and see different, op um, different opportunities. We have a ton of police that come in, fire department, all of that, lots of good male role models and all of that from the community. The Service League of Green Bay says many of those who qualify live with family in a temporary shelter. Back to school usually means cooler weather, doesn't it? Yeah, and a cool outfit too, apparently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so, some yeah. <laughs> new cool shoes. Cool all around. <laughs> But here's the thing, we're actually going to start warming things up as we go into next week. But first, I have to talk about the showers going on right now outside. This is a low pressure tracking its way on through. So we're going to have this first batch of scattered showers and thunderstorms. And that may be a lull before more of them start to develop as the main area of low pressure tracks its way on through. Now getting closer here to give you and track each individual storm, that would take me all morning because they're all over out there. That's why we're calling them scattered. Here they are uh, working their way through parts of the Door Peninsula. A Green Bay kind of a lull right now, but there is a little bit more out to the west. You see it just kind of scattered about. We're going to see this on and off as we head throughout the morning. Then maybe this bit of a lull as we head through mid to late morning. And then with a little bit of daytime heating, here we go again. More scattered showers and thunderstorms going into the evening as well. Now, scattered being the key word. It's not going to last all day. There will be breaks. Yesterday, 80 degrees in Green Bay. As far as today, with more clouds, just a couple degrees cooler, but still mild and a little bit on the humid side. I'll get to that in a second. When I say mild, we're starting off warmer than yesterday. 66, Appleton, Wapaka, same with Green Bay. Manitowoc, you're starting with 68 degrees. With dew points, they're a little bit higher than they were yesterday. 62 in Green Bay. We're going to keep this humidity around at least for today into the evening before some cooler, drier air moves in for tomorrow. That's on the back side of this low pressure system. So this slowly working its way on through. And as it does, again, scattered showers and thunderstorms. But look off to our north and west. High pressure gets here just in time for the weekend. Perfect timing for us. So here's SkyCast showing that swirl in the atmosphere. That's that low pressure system tracking its way on through. And with it, you see these uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms. When I say scattered, I'm saying it's not going to last all day. But you'll see a shower roll on through or a thunderstorm and then a break, then a shower or a thunderstorm, then a break that kind of uh, continues into the evening before it gradually tapers off as the night goes on. And then tomorrow on the back side of that low pressure, you see, we just might touch off a couple stray showers or two. It's not going to rain all day tomorrow either. I think most of your day dry a little bit on the breezy side and a little bit cooler for tomorrow. But today these scattered showers and thunderstorms, we're seeing them out there right now. They're going to be on and off hit or miss throughout the day. 78 degrees for tonight. More of these scattered showers and thunderstorms, but they gradually end as the night goes on. So if you are going to the Packers game, Poncho, 60 degrees for our overnight low. And then as far as tomorrow's concerned, 74, just a couple showers possible. I think a lot of your day all right. A little bit on the cooler side, but remember I said high pressure is coming in, which means your weekend is looking pretty nice. 76 Saturday with plenty of sun. Sunday, just a couple more clouds, but 80 degrees. So 
you got to take the good with the bad, I guess, yeah. Regina. For tonight, could see a little bit of rain at the Packers game. It wouldn't be an all-game thing. And then for the weekend, we clear it out. I have a good feeling about the Packers game. Do you know why? Why? Your tie. Yeah, that's the right. golden green. Yeah, yeah, you'll see this. You'll all see right. That. Thanks so much. We'll still ahead. It's hard to believe it's already here, but parents are taking the plunge for back to school shopping. The help parents are getting. And the Gunslinger is back. Highlights from the Lee Remmel Award Ceremony. It's 5:17 on your Thursday morning. $500 per child, that's the estimated back-to-school cost this year, according to a new survey by consulting firm Deloitte. While many parents spend less, the financial hit can still be big, especially for those already struggling to get by. Stacey Engerbretson shows you how hundreds of local families are getting a helping hand in this morning's NBC26 Cares. Backpacks, headphones, folders, the school supply lists are long and expensive. Thankfully, a local nonprofit is easing the financial strain of families in need of extra support. This one's nice. Julianne Rajasic is a single mom providing for six children. They're among the 700 students signed up for the Cool for School program. It fills in the gaps where we can't. There's so many pencils and notebooks and folders that everybody needs. You know, it's 10 cents here and 25 cents there, but in reality with six kids, it does add up leaving little money to buy back to school outfits. But during the event at the community clothes closet, children can pick out two brand new shirts, a pair of pants, socks, underwear, and a gift card for a new pair of shoes, all free of charge. That little bit saved at home goes a long way for us. It lifts a big burden, it really does. Sin Everhart has nine children. For her, the Cool for School event runs deeper than receiving a basic necessity for her kids. Um, really helps with our kids self-esteem, gets them ready to learn so they can focus on their studies and really not worried about maybe their ill-fitting clothing. Executive Director Diane McDonald says in the seven years the program has existed, 2,500 children have received new back-to-school clothing worth $25,000. We couldn't do it without our donors. We say that every day we can turn our lights on and open our building because of our donors. Nicolay National Bank gives grants to ensure the community clothes closet has a wide array of sizes and styles so every child is taken care of. The kids that come into the bank, you know, some of them you do see here and and it's great to know that, hey, we help those some of our clients and people in our community out. People like Everhart. It helps the whole community. I, I can't thank them enough. And Rajasic, whose 11-year-old son Jesse can now start the new school year off on the right foot. When the kids can wear what the other kids are wearing or what I can wear what the other moms are wearing, it just makes you feel a little bit more like a person. New this year, students at the Cool for School event can stop by four education stations. St. Joe's Food Program, Tri-County Dental, Menasha Police, and the Red Cross will teach kids about everything from healthy eating to creating an emergency plan for kids who are home alone after school. Stacey Angabretson, NBC26. School for School is being held tomorrow and Saturday to learn more about the program and how you can help donate or receive services from the Community Clothes Closet. Just visit our website at NBC26.com. Well, turning to weather now, let's check in with meteorologist Michael Fish, who's out on the weather deck. So, Fish, I know the sun's not out yet, but is it pretty chilly out there? No, it's actually not. It's a little bit milder than yesterday, Regina. And not only that, it's a little bit muggier. You'll feel that as you step out the door and... Look at, we're watching these uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms rolling on through. I just want to show you this wider view if you're traveling around the state. That's the center of the low. It's going to be bringing us occasional showers and thunderstorms just scattered about the area as we head through the day. Current conditions, well, it's pretty much around us that's seeing the rainiest area. But again, as that low pressure tracks closer, we get a little bit of daytime heating, and we're probably going to see more of those. 66 degrees currently in Green Bay. Your high temperature today, 78, and you see lots of lightning bolts here. That's because it's going to be kind of an active weather day around the state, uh, Regina. So just be aware, going through the day, you're going to see these hit and miss showers and thunderstorms just kind of sitting around the area going into tonight as well. That means the Packers game, just bring your rain gear because probably going to see an on and off hit or miss shower during the game. And, of course, a poncho. And of course, of, <laughs> of course. Of course, the poncho. All right, Fish, thanks so much.
Number four is back for yet another award. We'll tell you about Brett Favre's celebration in De Pere. Plus, a record-setting jackpot, the excitement that's driving players to buy their lottery tickets. You're watching NBC 26 today at 5.24 a.m. And now, NBC 26 Sports with Sports Director Charlie Sakaitis. Good morning, sports fans. His greatness is canon. It's legendary. Brett Favre has won just about every award one can in sports, but yesterday he accepted one more here in Northeast Wisconsin at the Swan Club in De Pere at the Lee Remmel Sports Award Banquet, which is hosted by the Rotary Club. Favre was presented with the Distinguished Service Award. The honor itself is noteworthy, but the man for which this banquet is named after Lee Remmel, the former beat writer, former Packers PR guy, who eventually became the team's historian, had a lot to do with Brett showing up. Remmel passed away in 2015, but he had a good relationship with the gunslinger, and that helped get number four to town. Just a remarkable man, tons of knowledge, obviously football knowledge and Packer knowledge like no other. Um, and really, that's why I'm back. This guy actually got to watch Don Hudson, Bart Starr, Paul Horning, Jim Taylor, Willie Wood, Willie Davis, Jim Taylor. I mean, the list goes on and on. Nitschke, um, Brett Favre. Uh, kind of put that one down at the, <laughs> the bottom. But it's it's nice to come back and, and in a setting like this, laid back and it's not too serious tell a few stories and have a few laughs and I know Lee would be grumbling and would frown upon it but that's what we loved about him and we'll hear more from Brett Favre tonight in the pregame leading up to the Packers first preseason game for now keeping you connected I'm Charlie Sakaitis for NBC 26. Thanks, Charlie. Packers legend Donald Driver is getting ready to say thank you to his fans personally. Driver is hitting the road this morning, headed on a four-day statewide tour. Here's a look at some of the stops. Miracle League of the Lakeshore in Manitowoc, Jockey being family in Kenosha, Line and Kugel's 150th anniversary celebration in Chippewa Falls, and he'll be at the Wisconsin State Fair this Friday. The tour will include some surprise stops as well. Ooh, well, surprise. Uh, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Any, no? Maybe, maybe he's yeah. uh, I, I guess not. <laughs> not right now, at least. Uh, outside, watching these scattered showers and thunderstorms rolling its way on through. This is a low pressure system right now, and you can see the center of it. It's right about here. See how everything's just kind of swirling around it? So we're going to see the scattered shower and thunderstorm activity as we head through the day. I'm kind of zooming in here, and I'm not going to show you every individual storm because that would take me all morning. I'm just showing you that we have scattered showers and thunderstorms rolling their way on through. But right now, Marquette and Green Lake counties pretty quiet. And most of Washera County, pretty quiet right now. But the rest of us, just seeing this occasionally moving on through. Not a lot of lightning with it, but there is just some hit or miss. Now, as we go through the morning, maybe a bit of a lull before we start to get a little bit more active as we head through the afternoon and this evening as well. You see a couple dots here. That's your chance of a couple scattered showers and thunderstorms at the Packer game. Now, it's not going to rain all game if we see it, but still that threat will exist. Currently, as you head out the door, 63 Ocano, 68 in Appleton. And the forecast for the rest of your day, scattered showers and thunderstorms. There will be breaks going up to a high of 78 degrees. But, Regina, if you missed the forecast for this upcoming weekend, I'll have that in our next half hour. Thanks, Fish. Well, NBC 26 is the place to be for full coverage tonight. Be sure to tune in to the pregame show starting at 6. Right after that at 6.30 is the Packers pregame show. Kickoff is at 7. Then right after the game, stay tuned for our postgame show. Well, another half hour of news and weather coming up. Stay with us. You're watching NBC 26 today. The time is now 5.30 on your Thursday morning. Welcome back. It's 5.32 on your Thursday morning. How's your morning been so far, Fish? <sighs> Another <laughs> active morning with the uh, oh, uh, cheering showers outside. We got a couple of thunderstorms, and I'm watching the frozen tundra. <laughs> the worst Lambeau day, too. Field. Yeah, I know. Gosh. The timing isn't good with that, but <laughs> still, it's a pretty stadium, right? Great to live in Green Bay. Current temperature 66 degrees, dew point 62, so it's a little bit more humid than we've been used to the last couple of days. And watching, again, these scattered showers and thunderstorms rolling their way on through, that's a low pressure.